Hello, and welcome to this instructional video on the ergonomic approach to ultrasound guided procedures for adhesive capsulitis, specifically focusing on the transverse approach to the coracohumeral ligament and the anterior approach to the inferior glenohumeral joint capsule. I noticed that many doctors still have difficulty approaching the inferior capsule and wondered about the spread of the injectant at the target. So, I will give you some clinical cases of the ultrasound approaches and help you to understand by introducing the MRI anatomy of the inferior capsule. I will introduce different patients per procedure so you understand correctly. Now let's proceed to target the inferior capsule. Many doctors need help understanding the 3D figures of the inferior capsule. They learned the joint capsule and overlying muscles separately. Also, the inferior capsule and internal synovial folds are overlapped. Also, the low echogenicity of the subscapularis muscle and inferior capsule makes it challenging to discern. Suppose you understand the bony landmark of the humerus, the inferior capsular attachment, and the inferior border of the whole structure. In that case, you will make approaching the inferior capsule easily. Also, identifying the anterior or posterior humeral circumflex artery, which separates the subscapularis muscle from the teres major muscle, will help to target the inferior capsule. Let's revisit the anatomy of the humerus and the attachment site of the inferior capsule. The anatomical neck of the humerus is situated just below the head of the humerus. It is a slight constriction immediately inferior to the articular surface of the head. The surgical neck of the humerus is located further down, where the shaft of the humerus starts to narrow before transitioning into the rounded head of the humerus. It is suggested that the anatomical neck of the humerus serves as the attachment site for the articular capsule of the shoulder joint. In the coronal section, the inferior capsule attaches to the anatomical neck to the inferior margin of the scapular glenoid. When observing the normal inferior capsule on coronal T2 weighted image, the true attachment of the capsule's end is the anatomical neck, with a fatty layer between the capsule and humerus between the anatomical and surgical necks. Now let's examine the axial view of the inferior capsular attachment site. The anterior aspect of the inferior capsule and the anteromedial aspect of the inferior capsule is covered by the deltoid muscle, the coracobrachialis muscle, and the pectoralis fascia. The sagittal view provides an additional perspective of the same area. I will provide continuous cinematic axial and sagittal images to help you understand the 3D structures. Next, I'll show you the coronal view of the pathological inferior capsule. Do you notice any differences? Correct, the inferior capsule appears thicker and seems to attach more broadly across the areas of the anatomical and surgical necks. Now, let's observe the axial view of the same area. The large, thick area is positioned on the anteromedial aspect of the humerus neck. It is the serial coronal, axial, and sagittal cinematic movies. It is easy to understand the pathology on the coronal image, but for interventional practice, you must be familiar with the axial and sagittal images. I will present a series of coronal T2 weighted images moving in the posterior to anterior direction. Please focus on the concavity of the humerus neck and the thick attachment of the inferior capsule. Let's go through the images again but at a slower pace.
Masterclass membership today and unlock a treasure trove of knowledge. Benefit from twice weekly videos, including inspiring lectures, clinical case discussions, and image interpretation insights. Elevate your skills and connect with like-minded doctors. Subscribe now for a brighter professional future.